Why are so many people so excited about the recent news about Facebook, aka Meta? Well, grab a drink, sit down, relax, celebrate with me, and let's talk about it. Cheers. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here, where we like to talk about all things tools and tech. Well, if you haven't heard already, Facebook, aka Meta, which they changed their name to, took a hit recently in the stock market. Meta's market cap went down 26% in one day. And why is that? Well, it seems to be at least partially due to the idea that they seem to be losing some of their stranglehold on the social media marketplace. That is, for the longest time, everyone was on Facebook and it felt like if you weren't on Facebook, you just didn't exist on the internet. If you're a business, you have to have a Facebook page. People were contacting other people through Facebook, and if you weren't on Facebook, they would wonder why. Even organizations such as churches and other groups were starting to use Facebook so much to let people know what was going on that if people didn't have a Facebook account, then they just felt left out. Facebook was just getting so big that a lot of people were saying that there really wasn't ever any possibility of any other social media platform coming along and sort of dethroning Facebook. Now, a monopoly is very scary to me, but the idea of having a company like Facebook, aka Meta, have a monopoly with a guy like Zuckerberg at the helm just ramps up that fear by like a hundred times. And why is that? Why is it that the idea of Meta in particular having a monopoly scares people like myself that have been following Facebook? Well, let's start off by talking about all the companies that they've hurt over the years with the ideas that they've taken. Do you remember when Facebook was just a wall for each person, much like MySpace? I remember when Twitter got popular, some of the tech podcasts that I was listening to started talking about how it seemed like Facebook took the idea of Twitter and made status updates and the news feed. Fortunately for Twitter and the idea of innovation, Twitter's still around. Over and over this happened with photo features, with calendar invites, and different things. These features from competitors just started appearing on Facebook. And that might not seem so bad when that happens to a large company that can absorb that kind of thing, but what happens when it's a startup that can get hurt by that kind of thing. Does anyone remember Gowalla and Foursquare? The idea was that you could check in at your favorite spots, restaurants, coffee shops, whatever. Foursquare was very popular here in the US and North America, and Gowalla was very popular in Europe. These apps would then post your check-ins onto Facebook. Well, eventually, Facebook decided to come out with their own check-in feature. To be honest, I don't know if anyone even uses Guala or Foursquare anymore. If they do, the user base certainly isn't as large as it used to be. My concern with this kind of thing is that it can stifle innovation, because the creators of those apps not only had to have the idea, but they had to get funding. So what happens if you or I have an idea to start an app, and we think it's great, and we go get investors, and they think it's great, but they won't invest because they're afraid that some big company might steal the idea and kill our company before it even gets off the ground. So if nothing else, I'm happy that the sledgehammer that Facebook has to squash smaller companies got 26% smaller. Next up, let's talk about some of their privacy practices. Facebook has shown over and over that they don't seem to care about their users' privacy. I don't remember the exact wording, but a journalist confronted Zuckerberg about this in an interview one time. They asked him if he was concerned over the backlash from the concerns that their users had. His response was essentially, eh, they'll get used to it. To me, this is worse than breaking in your house and stealing your TV and your possessions or stealing your car. Because your data, your privacy, your identity isn't something that you can just run out to Costco and buy another of. To me, this is one of the worst things that a company can do is to cavalierly abuse its users' data. And in my opinion, that's exactly what this is, is abuse. Can you even imagine 
if you had a friend or family member that was in a physically or emotionally abusive relationship and you confronted the abuser and all they had to say was, eh, they'll get used to it. Zuckerberg. And finally, we touched on the idea earlier that it seemed like Facebook was becoming this juggernaut that was so massive that there was no room for competition. Part of what was scary about that to me was that they had decided that they're going to be the Ministry of Truth. By contracting out to third-party fact-checkers who clearly weren't up to the task and had a very skewed political agenda. To be honest, I don't like a lot of the things that were being said, and there was a lot of bad information going around on Facebook. And I can understand the urge to want to do something about it, but it also seemed like the modern equivalent of burning books. I want to be clear and say that I'm not saying that Zuckerberg or Facebook aka Meta did anything illegal. They just on multiple occasions have crossed what I felt were moral lines that shouldn't have been crossed. I also think that Zuckerberg is a smart person and they have a lot of smart people at the company. I think changing to Meta and focusing on Web3 is probably a good move for the future. And I'm actually really excited to see what Web 3.0 brings us in the future. But given Meta's past, the idea of the company getting even stronger was just scary to me. I think cryptocurrencies and NFTs could also be huge in the future. But when Facebook was continually growing and they already had such a huge chunk of the global population on their platform, the idea that they could move most of those people into their metaverse and use their cryptocurrency and their NFTs would put Facebook in such a dominant position, not just in the US, but throughout the entire world. And what we know about Facebook and how their algorithm affects the thinking of the masses, it was starting to feel like move over Palpatine because Emperor Zuckerberg has mind tricks just like the Jedi, only he can do it en masse with his algorithm. With Meta's history, regardless if it was legal or not, the idea that they would gain even more influence over society's thinking and possibly cryptocurrencies which could become the default currency in the world because they have such a huge chunk of the world's population on their platform was just scary to me. So in short, I'm just happy because I'm feeling more optimistic than I have felt in a long time about the idea that there could be some competition in these areas. And that's good for all of us. If you enjoy this style of video, you might want to check out my video on my thoughts on the Tesla bot. I'll put a card up in the corner. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. I'd love to talk to you down there. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to hang out with me, and I'll see you next time. It was starting to feel like move over Palpatine because Emperor Zetterberg, Zetterberg, <laughs> that's a hockey player, not.